scary, they're ugly, they're violent. They're always in heat, and lucky for us, they still found time to make really bad movies about horny gorillas. Tonight, go ape. Only on USA's Real Wild Cinema. Welcome to the only place on basic cable where we're proud to show the worst movies ever made. I'm your hostess for the evening, Sandra Bernhard. As always, I personally select the naughtiest scenes so you don't have to channel surf for the good stuff. Tonight's theme, Go Ape, supports my theory that men never fully evolve from the ape. And our first feature, The Beast That Killed Women, proves my point. This forgotten treasure was filmed in 1965 at a nudist camp in Miami one of 10 films crafted that year by nudie master Barry Mahon. And try to spot the two half-naked New York supermodels cuddling in the bunk bed. The messy hair absolutely gives them away. They were shot in the Big Apple and then spliced into the film to spice things up. Sort of a lesbian Laverne and Shirley at sleepaway camp. Watch and prepare to go ape for the beast that killed women. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
the matter? Please, we, we had to help my husband. The thing has got him. What thing? The monster, the, the giant monster. Well, come on, we'll get a gun. Well, hurry. Will you move over? Oh, why don't you go back upstairs? I'm still scared. Hello, Miss Johnson. I'm glad you're here early to look over the layout. There's been one homicide and attempt on another last night. And uh, we seem to suspect that it might be an animal. We want to use you as a decoy. I think this whole thing is so terrible. What do you think? I'm certainly not going to stay here any longer. Well, I'm not either, for that matter. I don't want to endanger anyone's lives, so you'd better stay in the clubhouse, no matter what you see or hear. Do you understand? Good night. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you sure everything's all right? Yes, sir. Well, don't worry about a thing. We'll be in the next hut with guns. Now, let's go, because it may be a long wait. Did you lock all the doors and all the windows? Oh, thank you. Get it? Now that's a sign of a classy film. Get a girl to flash her bare butt for the final shot. When we come back, you'll see more tale during a savage fight between a black gorilla and a white ape. Can't we all just get along? Next, don't miss this hapless hunter as he unwittingly strikes a blow against the NRA. I thought it was the end. He mauled me with his brute strength and ponderous weight. Real Wild Cinema shooting from the hip when we come back. I've dated a lot of apes in my day, knuckle-dragging Neanderthals with hair on the tops of their feet. But any one of them look better than the simians in our next Jungle Boogie. And no wonder The Perils of the Jungle, a 1927 movie was freshened up 20 years later with a couple of moldy gorilla suits and some new footage. Presto, it was suddenly the white gorilla. Well, almost. There was one problem. The original film was silent, so to make it a talkie, they added pathetic narration. What they should have done was gotten more specific, like the big buck white ape now proceeds to cop a feel off the passed out damsel, who's looking good in a lacy tango blouse. At least she came dressed for the occasion. <laughs> White gorilla, the outcast, the scourge of the jungle. He seemed to know my gun had jammed. I backed away. He came at me. Closer and closer. When he jumped me, I thought it was the end. 
He mauled me with his brute strength and ponderous weight. Suddenly, something caused him to stop. It was the black monster, his eyes burning with hate for the white outcast. I limped away. I knew something had happened. As the beast heard me, he turned and faced me with all his pent up anger. I knew this time it was my life or his. with his huge chest filled with hate. I can almost see him as he discovers the white outcast lying there as though sleeping. to make him do that. And then the change, his bewilderment as he looks at the motionless figure, a sort of human emotion that comes over him. Then, slow realization, the outcast is dead. Then the animal instinct returns, the instinct to cover up and hide the remains of a fallen one from the scavengers of the jungle. A gesture for forgiveness as he chants the death call for the outcast of his race, the white gorilla. Did you see 
how well endowed that black gorilla was? The myth lives on. And speaking of myths, legendary director Paul Bartel will be right here on my couch, so get ready. Coming up, picture this, a beautiful Italian woman with hairy armpits and leg hair. Been there, done that? Not like the ape woman you haven't. No! Away! Don't monkey around with that dial. Real Wild Cinema will be right back. Welcome back to Real Wild Cinema's Ape Night, where the gorilla always gets it on with the girl. Start pounding your chest in excitement. Tonight's special guest with me is Paul Bartel. Hey, Paul. Hey, How Sandra. are you, sweetie? I'm great. Why so many films about apes? What's your take on it? Well, well you know, <clears throat> since the very beginning of cinema, horror films have been popular. And the villains in them have changed from time to time. You know, aliens were popular for a while. Um, back in the 20s, it was businessmen, and businessmen were then replaced by apes, who in the 40s would re be replaced by Nazis. But <laughs> apes represented sex. In the 30s, there were a lot of things you couldn't show, but apes were untamed animal instinct. Right. And they were a constant threat uh, throughout the world to white virgins. So it was almost slightly, you know, right there on the race, line of racism a little bit. You oh, think? yes. Maybe there, there was, was like racist undertones, overtones. They were threatening, but on a certain level, they were attractive. Right. I, you know, Roger Corman has made a lot of horror films and a lot of monster films. And I asked him once, I said, Roger, what does the monster want? And he was, he knew exactly what the monster wants. The monster wants to rape all the women and kill all the men. I love that. It's fabulous. Who doesn't? <laughs> um, do you think there's a tragic lack of roles for apes in Hollywood and in our modern cinema? Well, not only for apes, but the people who played it. You know, a lot of the, these clips, um, you'll find Margarita Markowitz was the woman playing the ape. If you look in the... In the she, Margarita Markowitz? Yes, she specialized. Some, 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 she, like, actually was inside the suits? Inside the suits. Uh, so in then we, many and this adds a whole other, like, twist of perversion to the thing. Yes, and believe me, when apes went out and Nazis came in, she was finished and heartbroken. On, on every level. Margarita <laughs> Markowitz, she, she was Mexican, she was a Jew, she was an ape. My God, what an identity crisis. Well, you know, Hollywood. Yeah, you got to cover the bases. Has there ever been a gorilla suit uh, on film that passed for real? Well, John Landis, who is a, um, a gorilla expert and whose first film, Schlock, was about a gorilla. Oh, really? Um, yes, he, uh, in some of his pictures, uh, has had gorilla suits that are, um, I think you couldn't tell whether it was a man in a suit or, and they're partially animatronic. Right. So that the actor is doing part of it, but part of it's being controlled by a guy off stage. Well, I love that. I'm holding you hostage. We're going to run a clip, so don't go away. We're going to talk in a minute. <laughs> Our next offering, The Ape Woman, is based on a true story. In the 19th century, some carnival sleaze discovered a woman in dire need of electrolysis, married her, and put her in his freak show. Nice guy, huh? Of course, in this 1964 Italian movie, she looks like Zsa Zsa Gabor sporting a fake Fidel Castro beard. But that's what makes her so wild! <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
all of this talk of apes and you just had to have a banana. Mm. Oh, honey. <laughs> they're irresistible, if I, you know what I mean. <laughs> I do, and they're not. Um, uh, wow. No, just kidding. I love you, Paul. Hey, now, Paul, tell me something. You know, you're crossing over into the acting world and kind of leaving the directing behind a little bit, which, you no, know... No, I'm not leaving the directing. You're not? All right, fine, <clears throat> no. good. Just tell me what you've been up to with, it, with your acting and directing. Well, I've got a project, a directing project called Modern Marriage. Sounds brilliant. Um, which is a, a comedy um, about two guys, one gay, one straight, sharing a house, and they have identical problems in their romantic lives. That's fabulous. But it takes, you know, several years to launch an independent film, and I've been working on this one for a while, so in between you have to work, so I've been acting. Did your films have any influence from exploitation films? Well, I learned my, my craft from the Cormans, first Gene Corman and then Roger Corman, and they are Mr. and Mr. Exploitation. Right. Uh, so yes, I did. One of the things that I learned was that the ideal length of a movie is four reels. That is, it'll fit on f into a, a four-reel can. Right. <clears throat> you save a lot on shipping that way. <laughs> so it shouldn't be over 88 minutes. Uh, 88 sounds perfect to me. I don't know. The older I get, the less patience I have for, uh, you know, a two-hour film. Real long movies. Well, you know, eight movies tend not to last very long, and, and they don't... Uh, the eight reelers. Right. It, eight reels, even seven reels is good for an eight movie. Roger discovers a lot of talent. So did... Well, what, was the, what, was the, what was the experience like working with him? My first one was for his brother, a horror f another horror film called um, Private Parts. Ooh. Not my choice of title, by the way. MGM <laughs> put that title on it. But they knew you were in it, and they knew it would be appropriate. And uh, Roger picked up on me, and uh, after letting me do a second unit uh, in Big Bad Mama, he invited me to direct Death Race 2000. Really? Well, I'd done car stunts in Big Bad Mama, and he thought I knew about cars. I knew nothing about cars. I care nothing about cars. I can't imagine you giving two hoots about a car. But I thought of some good car jokes. Right. And some jokes about drivers. And that was my principal contribution to that movie, really, was humor and a, a sort of weird point of view. And how was Stallone to work with? Oh, he was great. I had met him in New York, and he was actually, I suggested him to Roger. He'd made a couple of movies, but he wasn't very well known yet. Wow. And uh, I knew right then that he was a, a comer, a very bright guy and a wonderful writer. He'd written several terrific scripts. Well, I mean, what happened? Too, too many hormones or something? Too much, uh, too too much steroids. success. Too much success. It should only happen to us, Paul. Yes, well, it, in a small way. In a very small we've way. We've had our little, we've had our... We've uh, had our bouts with, with too, mu too much success. success. <laughs> That's why we're here together tonight. I'm, I'm looking for a return bout, actually, with too much success. I'll be, I don't feel I'll be that right I there alongside <laughs> of you with, with my, my hip-high go-go boots on, ready to be your sidekick in the world of success, oh, Paul. Thanks, but I know Seth. we're going to work together, and you are an incredible talent. Thank you so much for coming and being on the show it and gracing been. us with your fabulous stories and cinematic wisdom. Well, it has been my pleasure. Thank you, darling. Better stay with us if you want to learn the legendary secrets of Cambodian monkey madness. The actions of our women in seeking to protect this monster dumbfounded us. For the love of monkeys, next on Real Wild Cinema. I never had pets when I grew up. So I never understood the whole bonding thing with a little dependent furry creature. Now all you animal lovers, don't be sending nasty letters. Save your sympathy for the poor, deluded, semi-nude natives in our next film, Forbidden Adventure. Produced in 1937, it tells the story of a safari gone awry, and the culprits are the nudie natives who are the protectors and lovers of the local mountain gorillas. See why I don't trust pets? You start with a little hamster, and next thing you know, you're some monkey's love slave. It happened. Angkor, the long sought for goal itself. Beyond, was another elaborately carved wall depicting monkeys and women, women and monkeys. 
we stop dead in our tracks. Again, the incredible suggestion of apes wielding power over human beings, monkey adoration, monkey domination ruling the people of Cambodia since the day when Angkor was built 10 centuries ago. Evidently, this monkey worship has been deeply engraved in the lives of these extraordinary people. We felt superhuman forces about us. The more we saw of the wealth of these people, the more we wondered where they went and what became of them. They vanished seemingly overnight, leaving not a trace behind them, not a bone, a tool, a piece of metal, furnishings or jewels. Could their gold and jewels be still buried in one of the temples around us? However, it was not our business to seek for hidden treasure. Suddenly we saw what appeared to be a gorilla on the roof, and we were reminded of the stories of white men whose bodies had been found in the ruins. Eager to destroy this monster, we climbed to the top of one of the buildings, but only in time to catch a glimpse of the great beast disappearing into the jungle. And yet, perhaps subconsciously, we were becoming suspicious. That night, while I kept watch, weird cries coming from the jungle emphasized the mystery of the things we had seen. My imagination ran back a thousand years. I saw Angkor at the height of its overripe magnificence, eaten by luxury and vice. Ruled by a cruel king wearing a frosted crown of leprosy. A young queen compelled by a cruel destiny to share this monarch's throne. The queen's young dancing girl slipping into her private garden to begin an evening dance symbolizing the teams of slaves disguised as monkeys. The queen, madly in love with a captive prince, leader of the slaves, donned a monkey mask. Clandestine meetings between the two lovers. in the form of a spy deputed by a suspicious king to shadow his queen. An arrow speeding with a flame through the prince's heart. The queen supporting her dying lover whilst her dancers clustered about them. In imagination, I saw the tragic action which had inspired the carving on the walls of Angkor. The guards rushing in, carrying the queen back to the palace. The terrified dancers scattering. The prince's bodyguard of slaves, routed and maddened by the death of their leader, rushing in and carrying off the girls as booty. As I saw the scenes in the carving, I was certain that it had been placed there at the Queen's command to immortalize the memory of her dead lover. My mind was jerked back from the tragic pattern of the past to reality. One of our women was going out into the jungle. Wondering what motive she could have had in taking fruit from one of our food boxes and going into the jungle filled with wild beasts at this hour of the night, Jean, fearing for her safety, decided to follow her. Paralyzed, he wanted to shoot but could not. Here being enacted before his very eyes was the fantastic monkey worship, an actual living thing in our midst. What did it all mean? The incredible monkey worship we had encountered at every turn, a worship as alive today as it was in the days when it was recorded on the walls of Angkor. It had one of our girls in its grasp. I determined to seek a solution to this mystery.
came on a sight which froze us with horror. The great ape was carrying off one of our women. The actions of our women in seeking to protect this monster dumbfounded us. The monkey worship which had overthrown the mighty empire a thousand years ago was defeating us today, leaving the mystery of Angkor one of the greatest enigmas of the world. Next, real wild cinema gets scary. What's that? <laughs> I knew it. it must be the boys coming back. One clue, girls. It's not the boys. Get out of the house! Oh, what's the use? Watch what the apes do to those baby doll nighties when real wild cinema comes back. Okay, quick show of hands. Who among us has attended a party with a room full of college co-eds and pastel baby doll nighties? Yes, we all have, of course. The party gets crashed by a bunch of frat boys and their ugly hunchback buddies. But in Monsters Crash the Pajama Party, the guys arrive after the monster, and the girls hardly know the difference. Two coconuts and a banana baby, and you're mine. Here it is. Well, I don't know what we're so worried about. In this storm, no one's going to show up. Well, I'm going to find some place to wash up. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I knew it. It must be the boys coming back. I wonder where oh. Sue is. Well, she must have heard the racket. Well, she probably went on to see what they're up to. <laughs> <laughs> they must be all over the house. Well, let's find them. Well, let's separate. Maybe we can find them before they find us. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, I made a terrible mistake! A terrible mistake! I've been calculated by Sally! I've been calculated by Sally! Stay back! Stay back! Stay back! Stay back!
Our next feature is about an Italian toga party where the queen of the underground plays a kicky parlor game. She'll sleep with the first man who survives the scrape of the cage man-killing ape. It's the 1961 classic, The Mole Man Against the Son of Hercules. Let us see what is in the cage. <laughs> and these are your queen's wishes. Whoever will dare to meet unarmed and defeat this savage beast is the one I will choose as my husband. I will. I will dare to, Halis Moyab, to prove to you my devotion. You may use a sword. Now it's your turn. won the right to reign beside me as my husband and my king. That was some monkey bite he took on his neck. He's going to have teeth marks for weeks. Speaking of teeth, check out Sammy Petrillo, the Jerry Lewis of B-movies. Sammy was actually served a cease and desist order for copying Jerry's act. The next clip will show you why. I know you're going to miss me. And I'm going to miss you, too. Sure, I know it's rough. We've never been separated before. But, well, look at it this way. I'll only be gone for two weeks until I finish my vacation. And then, and then we'll be back together again. That won't be too bad now, will it, Pinky? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I know you'd understand. Hey, I'll tell you what. I've got precisely, um, 30 minutes until I have to leave. What say we play one last game of cards together, okay? <laughs> hey, take it easy, boy. Don't go away. Don't cheat on me. We'll be right back. The attractions are coming next on Real Wild Cinema. You will join the Real Wild Cinema Fan Club. You will be dazzled by a catalog of hundreds of uncut, uncensored, outrageous movies that we can't show on TV. Send $5 for a membership card, catalog, and newsletter, or order the Real Wild Cinema t-shirt for $15, plus $4.95 shipping and handling, and get your membership for free. Send check or money order to Real Wild Cinema, P.O. Box 65073, Seattle, Washington, 91155. You will join the Real Wild Cinema Fan Club. Time for our famous trailers and coming attractions segment. Real wild fans know the trailers are sometimes more interesting than the final cut. Like tonight, when our first trailer features Jane Mansfield and a prehistoric chick fight. Primitive love. A fantastic journey into the love life of the primitives. Guided by Franco Frankie, Jane Mansfield, and Chicho Ingracia. A comical, unpredictable, irresistible film. Get to work, you idiots! Flat lovers, huh? She has everything masked. 
form, quality, and quantity. What there is, she's got. Yes, Jane does have everything. She'll take you to the primitive paradises of the world. These girls are every color of the rainbow. Yellow, white, black, red. Chicho, it means that this picture has got to be in technicolor. Primitive love. Women of savage beauty like Tigri, ruler of her tribe. Nika, Arva Quest. Inventors of prehistoric weapons. Ingenious, wily in conquest. Women enslaved their men and wildly battled to keep possession of their slaves. was the race of mankind kept alive in the furious battle for survival. See the strange, luring, tribal dances of tormented longing. The battles with the mammoths and beasts of prehistoric times. A man monster, eight and a half feet huge, and his raids for women. More strange, luring tribal dances of tormented longing next time on Real Wild Cinema. I know I'm longing to be there. Good midnight to ya.